Oh, the yeah, fantastic result on Tuesday night. You've already had some special evenings, particularly at Ashton Gate. Where does that rank among them? Yeah, a, a terrific evening. I thought um, atmosphere was electric, um, which goes hand in hand with the performance, right? I thought the lads were terrific, uh, especially second half. I looked at the, obviously watched it about the second half. I thought we were uh, really, really good in you know emotionally how we were, but. Like I said, the whole performance, I thought, second half, the lads did a terrific job. And especially physically with the run that we've had and the energy that we showed, um, you know, we actually looked probably the stronger side physically as the, as the second half went on, which, you know, given, given, like I said, how many games we've had, the, the lads have done an incredible job. So it was, a, it was a terrific evening. And like I said, delighted for everybody involved to get the three points. Is that what pleased you most in the, in the second half you were able to build? And what was a positive first half? Yeah, I think there was a lot of aspects to it. I think, you know, if look at the 21 games that I've done, I think uh, we, we've had a real mixture in, in them. I think there's been some, some really strong aspects, but bringing it all together the other night with the press, with the block, with how we managed the ball and we won it back, with, you know, a few phases where we calmed down and kept it for a little bit. You know, emotionally, you know, not, not feeling pressure and panicking. I thought, you know, there's so many positive aspects, which... You know, I know a lot of the work that we've done and the conversations we've had with the players and everything we've been through. So to see it then come out, you know, in a game against an opposition that were obviously flying was, you know, was terrific to see. So, yeah, it was a, it was a good evening. I mean, tactically, it was spot on, wasn't it? And how much have you been working, particularly on on things like set pieces, because that's where you look very dangerous as well. Yeah, we, we have limited time to be fair. So again, I said about it after the game. Pat Pat does a lot of work on the set pieces. To be fair to him and. You know, we, we try and cram it in as much as we can. But little things, we scored off a throw in the other night, which, as I said, we, we, we spent 15 minutes about, just before the Coventry game, actually. The day before the Coventry game, we spent 15 minutes kind of running through, you know, bits on, on you know, just the setup and what we, what the objective is in each third of the pitch on throw-ins. And, again, credit to the lads and what, what they've done an outstanding job at is, whether it be 15 minutes, whether it be video or animations or a quick conversation, even at half-time, just transferring the information that we're giving them into the game and onto the pitch. They've done a... Done an excellent job. So, um, yeah, the, the, the set pieces have been great. I've been really pleased with those. And the three different scorers as well. Must be pleased that other players are starting to, to pitch in in that vein. Yeah, definitely that. We need everybody. We need everybody to step up and contribute. And, you know, that, that including the subs, obviously, when you look at, you know, the third goal with Ross, who'd come on, and Harry, who'd come on, you know, combining the score, again, speaks volumes about, you know, the importance of the squad and, and everybody being in the right state of mind to, to perform when called upon. And we spoke uh, before the Southampton game about Sam Bell perhaps needing a goal <laughs> and you bundled it in. Is those the type of goals that can set strikers on a bit of a run? Yeah, doing the world are good, to be fair. I, I know he's, you know, he's like, keep saying, I've said it, I think after the last couple of games, his performance level has been good. You know, but at the same point, of course, you know, the, you're in the team to, to score, to contribute, to assist. And yeah, you know, whether it's a, an outstanding finish or a, a scruffy tap-in or... You know, whatever it is, it counts as one ultimately at the end of the day. So, you know, we had to get, he had to do a, a really good job, to be fair, to get across the fullback to get in that position to, to, to score. So, yeah, he's, he's in a good spot. It'll, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him continue to grow. Do you think that was important, scoring first against a, a side like Southampton, who had such confidence with that unbeaten run? Yeah, massive, huge, especially obviously they had a good chance at the start of the second half off the back of us. So, again, I think, you know, the timing then was it about five minutes later. I think we obviously went down the other end and scored. Um, and especially the second goal, I think the second goal, just in terms of you know the longer, the longer it goes on at one nil, I think if you know if you get into the very late stages, you know especially with the, the momentum and the possession they build, um, you know I think you know that that can you be, can become a little bit nervy. So I think the fact we obviously got the second, you you not relax of course against that level of opposition, but it you know you know you've got a little bit more you know of a cushion. So again, yeah, the, the timing of the goals, the manner of the goals, obviously you know play a huge uh, part in terms of how you can manage the game. And next up, a, a very different challenge. QPR struggling at the wrong end of the table. How important, perhaps, is that to get some consistency for your side, which we've spoken about so many times? Two great results against teams high up in the division, now facing one down the bottom. Yeah, I think yeah, it's going to be a really tough one. I think, you know, especially, you know, with, uh, you know, expectations change, everybody will really expect in us, but... I know this division and I know how well coached they are. I've watched them numerous times recently. I watched them last night. I watched them against Norwich. You know they don't they don't give up many chances. They're not they're not losing loads of games. It's it's very fine the margins in terms of what their games look like, including last night. So I think it's a tough game. It, it, do you know what I mean? It, it'll look different in terms of you know the how we have to set up, what we have to do will change slightly. But 
the biggest thing would be the mindset for me. I think that's that's what I'll be looking for on Saturday. Our, our mindset, our approach, you know, and, and and how we go to try and control the game, and and you know, and making sure that our, our heads are in the right place to go and you know hit the performance level we know we're capable of to win. And talking about mindset, and we're going to speak to him in a bit. But Hayden Roberts coming in, how impressed were you with his performance? Yeah, he was excellent again, wasn't he? I thought he, you know, he, he tired just before he came off. I did have a panic up when I looked up <laughs> and he was left wing, um, but I, I thought he did an excellent job, you know. And you now, if you look at the two games, he's come in, you know, he's coming against Nottingham Forest Premier League players, and he's come in against, you know, an extremely strong, informed Southampton side, and, and and done really well. So, you know, I think he showed some of his qualities going forward the other night as well. Uh, and he defended well, so there was a lot of positive things, you know, from from Hayden. So he's been he's had to be patient, he's had to wait, but you know he's he's done the best thing, which is step in and you know grab the opportunity when you get it. Is it a similar sort of situation to Harry Cornick in that I know he's had an injury, but he has had to wait for his chance, but he took it when it when it came, and and that positive attitude from those kind of players. Yeah, I was delighted for H. He's been brilliant, you know. Keep saying it, but in and around the place, he's been brilliant. And you know, he, I've seen him score goals like that numerous times in training. So, again, you know, moment of quality. I have to say, Ross, the I spoke about it this morning, but the quality and the feel on the on the cutback from Ross, the awareness rather than just smashing it across the box to get your head up and have a look, pick him out, and then you know, H, H does a really good job to get across Walker Peters when you watch it back and and just show composure to guide it in. So, I'm de delighted for H. I think you know, in terms of yeah, he was. He was close to starting the other night. It was just a bit of a bit of sickness, a little bit rough before the game, which is why he didn't. Um, but you know, we need, like you said, we need everybody to contribute and we need everybody to play their part in in scoring goals. And just last year, as you say, twenty one games now. I know you say you don't have a lot of time because it's relentless championship schedule. But do you feel like it is coming together now, and you're seeing the rewards of the hard work you're putting in. Yeah, it's, it's definitely moving forward. Uh, for, for me, I won't be getting carried away just because of you know two, two results. I think I'm quite clear where we're at and what we need to do. I still think there's a lot of work. I'm looking forward to once we get through Saturday. We've actually got two weeks where we can get on the grass and train. Um, so I, I'm looking for. I still think there's a lot of areas we can get better at. But uh, I don't want to take anything away from the last two performances because they've been they've been excellent. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, there's so much potential in the group that you know, just because we've won two doesn't mean we've hit our optimal level. We've st we still got a lot of work to do. Thanks, Johnny. Cheers. Does Scott and um, Cal come into the picture for the weekend at all? Yeah, Cal, Cal was just a bit stiff off the back of the other day, so we need to assess him in the morning. But Twi Twiney trained today, so he's, he's a lot closer. Um, so he, he's a potential for the squad at the weekend, yeah. I swear I'm not asking you to try and like get the team out of you. <laughs> <clears throat> but with Scott, it's obviously an interesting one because you've said he, he kind of operates best in a central area. Obviously, the way the team's set up at the moment, there seems to be only one, <coughs> excuse me, role there. Knighty's obviously been playing there. Whereas when he went out, you had the two tens. How do you kind of, if, you know, within that system, how does he fit into that system, hypothetically speaking, of course? Yeah, you've got, you got options as well. I think even even if you look at the other day, Anis rolls inside as well. So you can always, with, with Twine, you can play him in the middle or you can play him from the side and come inside the pitch. So it definitely gives us that option. Um, I think it's having a look to see, to see what's best for him at the minute and what's best for the team. Um, but it, yeah, for, for me, it's more around that. We can tweak it and change it however we need. And uh, the, the, the biggest bit is creating a shape structure that we know will, you know, what we think will get a success in a game and then getting players in slots to bring their strengths. So... You know, when you're an out-on-out -out winger, it doesn't make sense to bring them inside the pitch. The same as you know, when you've got someone that's best in the middle of the pitch, putting them out wide. So we can manipulate it, and I think that's what I think that's probably one of the things. If you look at you know, since we've been here, that has pleased me most. We can play in a back four, we can play in a back three, a back five. We can play with wingers, we can play with full. You know, I think the lads have done a terrific job of grasping the information and the principles of how we want to play, and then giving us the flexibility either in game or between games to change system shape. Because in the kind of attacking midfield positions into forwards, all of a sudden like there's like a ton of competition there. What you said selecting a team's like the hardest part of the job, so it must be really hard at the moment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. Hey, with all of them, with all of them, I think you know. And that, that to be fair, when you when you look at it, it's, it's taken a while. Obviously, when we first came in, there was what eight. I think we had eight long-term injuries, which you know is, is, is massive in terms of one the lads that are playing, but obviously also competition culturally, so, so many aspects and. Again, credit to you know the, med the medical and the you know the sports science department to get the lads back on the grass. We now need to make sure that we keep them there. Um, but but uh, the, the competition is only good if you manage it right. And I think that's that's so important for how we work. That it's not just having two players in position. That's competition. It's then how do you you know how do you communicate? How do you 
you know, educate, how do you support, how do you challenge, how do you kind of, you know, create that culture where everybody's putting the team first and me, me competing against you, you know, makes my level better. So we've got lots of lots of options at the minute. It's quite nice to be able to look behind and, you know, have options where, you know, we can sustain the level, if not improve it in game. And, and you know, that's going to be important for us between now and the end of the season. How difficult is it when you've got, I mean, like, for example, like in a clear 1v1, Pringy and Hayden out on the left, uh, maybe George and Ross at right back, where you've got guys competing for one spot. You want them to be pals, but you want them to almost be adversaries as well. How do you kind of work that dynamic? With a lot of challenge. I think uh, I think it's just constant. I don't think it's just now because they're back. I think since we came in the door from day one, I think you have to lay down your groundwork and your references there that it's about the team. So, you know, understandably, when I put up the team tomorrow morning, everybody will be looking, am I in it? Whereas I pick the team through the lens of what does the team need? You know, I think when you speak with some of the more senior guys, like Kingy, uh, you know, Matty James, I think when you speak with them guys, as you kind of get back into your careers, you look at it, you know, why does the coach pick that team as opposed to am I playing or not? So, again, I think that in terms of, you know, like I said, laying down the groundwork early days of that and being quite clear and transparent with the players, I think then having constant communication so as to some of the decisions explain why and again it's not around always justifying what I do but I think sometimes going that this is why or be ready for this you know I think you know just just communicating and being quite open with the lads I think is quite important because it, it just changes so quickly you know you see with Hayden Hayden you know back fit doesn't play for a month probably in his head and I know he was in January thinking around you know potentially going out to get games which we were never going to allow to happen and then you know within however long after the window shut and he's playing against Forest and he's playing against Southampton, two huge games. So that, that that's, you know, reinforces for me how important it is that the lads are ready when they get you know called upon. So when you pick the team, do you kind of offer an explanation as well rather than sort of like exam style putting up on the wall? Yeah, no, if I feel I need to speak with someone, I'll pull them before it or maybe after it or, you know, I'll always say to them if they want to come and knock on my door on a Monday after the game. But I also think there's an element of respect from that in terms of, hey, I've picked the team. There's a respect in terms of, hey, this is what I think is right. And let's be clear, I'm not always going to get it right. I'm, I'm quite you know, honest with myself. I reflect on you know, the things I do and how I work. Um, but again, I, what, what I do is spend a huge amount of time discussing it and you know, obsessing on trying to get it right. Yeah. And then, like I said, for me, it's the players and showing the respect. Look, that's the team. Of course, I don't have to necessarily agree with it, but I'll respect it. And then if they want to chat, they can always come and see me on a Monday. I uh, almost don't want to ask, ask this question, but I kind of have to. Um, what's the latest for Rob, Rob Atkinson? Yeah, bad news. He's, he's going to be out for quite a while. So he's, he's, he's got a tear in his hamstrings. So unfortunately, he's going to be out for some considerable time, which, like I said the other day, I'm gutted for him because he's, he'd worked extremely hard to obviously get back into the position he's at. So I know the guys are you know, assessing and analysing every tiny little bit of detail as to why it might have happened. But unfortunately, you know, sometimes... Uh, you, you can't always get to the answer. Uh, so they're, they're working hard at the minute to try and kind of assess and analyse, but unfortunately he's going to be some time. Um, would that be the season? Pretty much, yeah. Um, how is he with that, within him as well? Yeah, not, not, not great, to be fair, understandably. Um, you know, he's, it's been quite a, quite a long period, obviously, for him, and he's worked so hard, and especially, obviously, emotionally, when you play a, you know, a game, you start to you know, feel like you're a lot closer, and then to get that, I think, is tough. But... You know, the big, the big bit for me is a bigger picture perspective. He's, you know, in, in terms of family, etc. You know, sometimes it, it feels like the end of the world, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, is he's, he's a fit, healthy person. You know, with a with a young family that you know he, he needs to be there for as well. So again, I think you know what what he knows with us is he'll get all our support. We'll do everything we can to look after him and you know make sure that you know we get him back ready to go next season. Moving um, on to the game on Saturday, um, in terms of QPR, you talk about the expectation, which obviously will be there. Um, I guess the other, or an aspect of it, you're probably going to have quite a bit more of the ball than in the last two games, where you've almost turned into a counter-attacking team, which sort of taps into this your idea of control, but control doesn't necessarily mean possession, does it? No. So, but now it will, probably. I don't know. So how's that challenge going to look different for you and the players? Yeah, I think I actually think it's something. Even although we've we've counted really well, I still think there's passages in in you know whether it be against Forest or the last two games where we've actually shown uh, the control we've had. We've we've done better with it. We've gone in more dangerous areas. You know, Forest is a good example where 
you know, the possession was equal. Um, you know, even first half in the first leg, um, in the, you know, the, the first game, where first half we, we had a lot of the ball, but there was purpose to it. And again, I think they're the bits that we've kind of gradually tried to work on. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we'll see them come out if we do have more of the ball. But again, they're, they're, I'm not. They're a good side. That for me, they are well coached. I think he's done a really good job. Probably, you know, they're in the early stages with him still. Obviously, I think was that his first game as well. I oh, was his first home, first home game. game. Yeah, so he's he's still been in that, that that phase where when you when you look at how they're working, I do think they're well set up. I think they're hard to beat. Um, so again, I, I know it's going to be an extremely you know difficult game. Um, in, t- in terms of possession, in terms of the, the players that are sort of central to that, obviously Matty James had a very good game, as did Joe again. They're playing at a very high level. The contract question is kind of always going to be there until it's not there. I just wondered, is there any development on that? And where do you kind of stand in the decision-making with that? Yeah, there's no update on it at the minute. Those conversations will happen, I think, you know, at the, at the appropriate time. And, of course, it's, as Brian says, there's no point having somebody in the squad that I'm not going to pick, so I'm fundamental to the decision. So, you know, of course, it, it will sit in a room, me, Brian, and, and have that discussion at some point when it's right. Um, but it's just not been the focus at the minute. There's, obviously, we had the window and we've had that many games that, you know, I'm sure in the near future will be something that we'll, we'll discuss. But they're obviously playing at a very high level at the moment. Um, I mean, kind of how impressed have you, have you been with both of them? Yeah. You've talked about Joe. Yeah, and, and Jamo. I have a great relationship with Jamo. I think he's done terrific for us, to be fair. I think, you know, you, you see him especially... Obviously, the, the schedule he's had as, as well. Obviously, you know, didn't didn't start away at Forest, but obviously came on him with the extra time. It's yeah. not far off a full game. Then obviously goes again at Middlesbrough and goes again the other night. And you know, credit to him. I think you know, with with dealing with that volume and then and the level he's hit, I actually think he he looked good physically the other night. As did Joe. Thought we finished extremely strong. Um, and, and them two were fundamental to that. Give him uh, to get through a lot of a lot of leg work, especially first half when we weren't quite right tactically. They. Uh, they, they, they tended to be the two that suffered with the running, so they've both done extremely well, uh, and it's about sustaining that. I think that you know, like I said, the, the weekend might look different. It might be a, a different challenge given the expectation, but uh, you know, it's now, it's now transferring that level uh, that they've shown in the recent games. You know, again at the weekend and the weekend after that, and, and you know, continually hitting that level. Will there be any? Worry? I mean, it's sort of been mentioned within the sort of fan base to an extent, but any anxiety because they are potentially becoming free agents on the open market, the way they're playing, the competition that increases, is that a consideration internally at all? Yeah, you're, you're obviously protected to certain dates, so we know what the dates are um, that we, you know, we're obliged to have those conversations. So, again, I think it, it, sometimes I think that, you know, going into those things can derail certain bits as well. So I, I think for me, while it's... While they're in a good spot, let's keep them there. And uh, with me, always with anything is about being open, honest, and transparent. So I'll always deal with the players and have those conversations, you know, first before we do anything else. So uh, yeah, for, for, for me, I think you know they're enjoying their football. They're, you know, they're hitting a certain level at the minute. It's now about consistently doing that. Um, you know, was that just because of two wins doesn't change everything. I think you know it was only probably four or five weeks ago everybody was doom and gloom. So you see how quick it can change. Whereas I think what we've shown here is internally us, the group, we stay quite level, um, heads down and work. And again, I think it's, it's now, you know, like I said, we've got a, a different type of you know, game coming up in the near future. Um, and it's about, you know, now, now going and transferring what we want to do into those games. Last one. I was just wondering, when it's nights like Tuesday, <clears throat> it's like it's going off, like Ashton Gate's going mad. Okay, especially when the third goal, goal, third goal goes in because it was sort of proper exhilaration about it. How do you kind of stay on a level? Because everyone else is going bananas, it's including the bench behind you. What are you doing to stay on a level? And how do you That's do it? Good question. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, like, have you always done it? Or was there times where you were a little bit... I don't get me wrong. I celebrate the goal and I enjoy it because, again... Uh, how? I had, I had a little moment with the staff, to be fair. Okay. I think it was out, but quickly move on. I think it... it it's really weird, I think, for, for, for probably me, and I know definitely for Hoggy and some of the other staff, that it's really hard to enjoy it. <laughs> Even at 3-0, it's really hard to enjoy it, yeah. Just, yeah, especially because you know how dangerous they are. And nothing against our lads, but yeah, just because you've seen it so many times in football. Especially the few days earlier with them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So especially when you've been in football that long and because of the nature of our role that, you know, it, you're so in the performance that you can't, you don't have time to get carried away just because you know how quickly it can change. You know, it takes two seconds to score a goal. So, 
again, I think it, it, of course, I don't know, for five seconds I celebrate and then it's right bang, get a message onto him right now, how do we manage the next period? And I think you just probably become a bit hardened and trained to that you don't have time to get carried away with it. You have to then go, right, what's next? Um, and, and even after the game, you know, probably relieved more than <laughs> excited and enjoyed after the game. And then it's right, what, what do we now need to do to get ready for Saturday? And that, that you know, is the nature of, you know, the cha of championship football that is constant, it's, you know, relentless. And yeah, I'll, uh, like I said, especially when I'm in this position, do every single thing I can to make sure that, you know, going into every game, we're, we're best prepared and we're ready to win.